Is your quarter horse not quartered enough for you? Have you ever looked at your horse and just thought, ah, you're just too scrawny for me? Well, then I guess you have to walk yourself down to your local halter showing facility and uh, pick up one of their bodybuilders. Yeah, I know you guys, if you've never seen an equine bodybuilder, well, you definitely have now. So welcome to uh, Raleigh's deep dive into horse bodybuilding competitions. Oh wait, no, never mind. They're just halter shows, but what the hell is this? Seriously. <laughs> But you guys, before we get into today's juicy, thick video, we have to say a massive thank you to today's sponsor, which is Emergency Fund by PetCube. They've sponsored me multiple times before, and I have personally been using Emergency Fund for my own animals. It's just absolutely amazing. So if you are in the United States, this is for you. Guys, we all know how expensive pet insurance is, and we all know how necessary it is with how expensive the average vet visit is. Emergency Fund by PetCube is a pet insurance alternative. They cover online vet visits, consultations, and emergency vet bills. You can even chat with veterinarians anytime and be covered in the case of an emergency for up to $3,000 a year. You can start using the fund from the 15th day after your subscription. And to use emergency fund, you need to start a chat with a veterinarian and have a confirmation that your case is eligible for coverage. Then you can visit any vet clinic in the United States within four hours. After all of your treatment is done on your animals, you can contact their hotline to review the vet bill and receive payment directly to your vet clinic. While traditional pet insurances require you to submit each pet for an additional price, examine pre-existing conditions, and refuse to insure or charge more per pet, Emergency Fund by PetCube protects up to six pets in your household with just one plan, even with pre-existing conditions. This honestly is one of the best things I've ever seen created by a company. You guys, pet insurance is literally like 60 to $70 per animal with any other company. I know because I have pet insurance and it's ridiculous, but with Emergency Fund by PetCube, you get all of your animals, up to six in your household, covered under one plan. I mean, it really is a lifesaver. So you guys can click my link down below and use my discount code and definitely go check this out. Get your emergency fund set up for you and your pets. You won't regret it. I seriously, I can't believe these are real horses. Like, is this a joke? I truly feel like horse industries are trying to give me a heart attack. Now, I know the halter showing industry has been going downhill for a long time, Personally, I feel like it's been going downhill since the Stallion Impressive was bred. I mean, the fact that we have horses that show up to halter shows looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger if he was reincarnated as a horse and put on anabolic steroids. Um, what is going on? I am dead inside. <laughs> like, how is that natural? Dude, look at that horse's butt. Why is his face so small? Look at how tiny his- Look at- Oh my god! 
Look at how big those shoulders are. Oh my God, that's so not natural. Oh my God. I literally want to pull my hair out. Look at how tiny his face is compared to his body. Oh my God. Dude, that ribbon's barely fitting around his neck. It's bulging. Oh my God. Why do horses need to look like this? This is honestly hysterical. This is like a clown show. I cannot believe that people think this looks good. It really shows you how sick and twisted and warped everybody's perception of reality is these days. The fact that people think this looks good. This is the same thing as people in the Arabian world thinking that the sunken in faces of these horses looks good. Dude. Oh my god. That horse's chest is like six feet wide, dude. Oh my god. The muscles are so big, it's literally bulging. I feel like I'm gonna see the actual muscle rip through the skin. Is anybody gonna talk about how much weight these horses are bearing on their feet? I mean, think about how much their hooves are going to deteriorate at such a quick rate. And look at this. I can't believe that they think that that looks good. Each section of the horse looks like it weighs a thousand pounds. <laughs> I want to put these horses on a scale and see how much they weigh, seriously. These horses are morbidly obese. It does not matter that these horses have nothing but muscle on their frame. They're morbidly obese. And the sad part about this is this does not come with no health complications. We'll get into HYPP in just a minute, but in general, horses should not be this muscular. This screams anabolic steroids, and not just anabolic steroids, but feeding a horse such a ridiculous diet for muscle building and muscle growth. I mean, guys, this is not healthy. What do you, I mean, what do you even call this? This horse looks like a, it has tumors all over its body. That's how giant the muscles are. For those of you who don't know though, one of the biggest reasons why halter showing horses look this way is because the majority of them are bred from the stallion impressive. And unfortunately, this stallion was a carrier for HYPP, otherwise known as hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. It is primarily seen in horses with quarter horse lineage, particularly those who are descendants from the stallion impressive. But this is not breed specific because it also occurs in paints and Appaloosas, as well as a few other breeds. HYPP is caused by a mutation of the sodium channel gene, SCN4A, that regulates the flow of ions across muscle cell membranes. To elaborate further so most people understand this, the sodium channel normally allows the controlled movement of sodium ions into and out of muscle cells, which is necessary for normal muscle function. However, in horses with HYPP, the genetic mutation leads to an abnormal increase in the permeability of sodium ions, causing excessive movement of sodium into muscle cells. This abnormal movement of sodium ions disrupts the delicate balance of ions inside and outside the muscle cells, leading to a range of symptoms. Horses with HYPP may experience episodes of muscle tremors, stiffness, weakness, even paralysis. It's very serious and it's honestly abusive to breed horses with this genetic disorder, in my opinion. These episodes can be triggered by various factors such as stress, exercise, changes in the diet, or even excitement. During an episode, affected horses may exhibit characteristics such as muscle twitching, trembling, sweating, difficulty in standing or moving, and in severe cases, they may even collapse. The severity and duration of each episode can vary among affected horses. Many vet studies have focused on understanding the genetic basis of HYPP, developing diagnostic tests to identify carriers and managing affected horses. However, genetic testing is available to detect the presence of the specific mutation responsible for HYPP, and this testing identifies carrier horses as well, which these horses will have one copy of the mutated gene and affected horses will have two copies of the mutated gene. 
Furthermore, management of horses with HYPP involves careful dietary control to reduce the intake of potassium, which can exacerbate symptoms. Feeding low potassium diets and providing frequent small meals can help minimize the risk of episodes. Additionally, regular exercise and stress reduction techniques can also be employed to help maintain muscle function and overall health in affected horses. It's important for people to test their horses before breeding them. This is why on this channel, we talk a lot about responsible and ethical breeding. It's honestly inhumane to breed horses with this genetic disorder. And most people breeding horses with this genetic disorder are breeding these horses for show purposes because they like the way these horses look. This is the reason why we need responsible breeding practices and we need people to not breed horses just based off how they look and how they appear. This genetic disorder is cruel. 150% and most halter showing horses have this. A lot of people don't even test for it anymore because they don't want to stop breeding their horses simply because they like the way that this looks, which again is cruel. Now I'm not trying to jump to conclusions because some of them might not and some of these horses might just simply be on anabolic steroids or they might be bulked up to absolute insanity, but the chances that they have it are extremely high. To me, this is the equivalent of breeding brachycephalic dogs. I think that it's insanely cruel and people only breed those dogs for looks because they think it looks cute. Those dogs have a myriad of health problems and they can't breathe, literally. It is insanely cruel to breed brachycephalic breeds. This is Goku at rest at home. His dad sent us this video of him snoring. This is not normal. It's a red flag for brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, also known as BOAS. Here we can see he is having a hard time breathing here in the exam room. This is not normal, and it's a result of excessive tissue in the throat called an elongated soft palate, as well as very narrow nasal openings that require surgical correction. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around these horses not being on steroids. If you were to put a picture to a name, anabolic steroids. <laughs> this type of muscle on a horse is not natural. And I know a lot of people are gonna come for me and say, oh, there's no way these horses are on steroids. Okay, bitch, I'm not the only one who believes that. Everybody who watches these videos, I'm not alone. <laughs> I feel like you don't even have to be a horse person to assume that these horses are on steroids because they just most likely are. The most common tests that are done at horse shows are tests to identify the presence and concentration of specific substances in their metabolites. The metabolites are byproducts produced when the body processes and metabolizes the administered substances, including anabolic steroids. But it's worth noting, you guys, that the detection window for different substances varies drastically. Some steroids are detectable in a horse's system for a shorter period of time, and others are detectable for a longer period of time. So the timing of the sample collection in relation to the administration of the substance impacts the likelihood of detection, meaning that there is 150% a very easy way for people to drug their horses with anabolic steroids and get rid of it before a show so it's not detectable. I know that it sucks to say that, but that's the honest truth. You can easily get away with it when you go to horse shows. It really just depends on the vet and how thorough the testing is. But I digress because I don't even have to go any deeper into this. It's obvious that it's wrong. Look at it. Look at these horses. I'm sorry. We don't need bodybuilders in the horse world. We just need horses. Since when was being a horse and looking like a horse not good enough? Not to mention that you guys are continuing to breed horses with serious genetic disorders that are affecting their health and their offspring's health. It is just so cruel all around. Looking at these horses should be a red flag. <laughs> Point blank period. This should not be allowed. Halter showing, what are you doing? I cannot believe that people actually looked at this horse and said, 
That is exactly what we want to go into the show ring. Matter of fact, let's give it a ribbon. How about that? Okay, let's encourage this even further. There is no shortage of dummies out there, especially in the horse world. And anytime you see stuff like this, these people should be shut down immediately. This is not a good look. Anyway, you guys, a massive thank you to Emergency Fund by Pet Cube for sponsoring today's video. <sighs> so I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.